Welcome to Open the Book. If you want to join in today, there are several different things you can do. The first is count to seven, and I know you can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Have you ever heard somebody making a horrid sound when they want to be nasty? Like this. Na, 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 na. So, if you want to, you can join in and make that noise as well. And the third way is to comment every time something really big is mentioned, like this. Wow, that's big. That's brilliant. Now we're ready to go. It's sometimes very hard to do what's right, isn't it? Like when your mum says you're not allowed to go to the park, but your friends persuade you to go. You're certain to get a telling off, aren't you? In today's story, those young boys that we met before have grown into men, and they're still sticking to what they know is right. And they end up in deep trouble. That doesn't sound fair, does it? But don't worry, God hasn't deserted them. So, let's open the book and read the Bible story called The Men Who Liked to Say No. King Nebuchadnezzar, yes, that really was his name, was very pleased with himself. I have won lots of battles, and my country is now the biggest. Wow, that's big. And the best in the whole world. Do you know why King Nebuchadnezzar's country did so well? Every time he defeated a country in war, he took their best leaders, their strongest young men, their hardest workers, and brought them back here to Babylon, and they worked for him instead. And do they work? Those Hebrews I brought back when I defeated Judah may be a bit odd. They worship their own God and do lots of praying, but apart from that I can't fault them. Some of the Hebrews are my most trusted officials. I send them all over the kingdom to do important things for me. And so everything seemed to be going well in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. I really am a very clever king, truly great. I think I'll order a great big golden statue to be put up in the centre of town so that everyone can admire me. Wow, that's big. And so he did. An enormous golden statue. And Nebuchadnezzar was pleased. But there were other people in the kingdom who were not happy with the way things were in Babylon, and in particular with the way that all those Hebrew foreigners were doing so well, getting all the best jobs, na, 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 na. pleasing the king with how hard they worked, winning the trust of the king by being honest. No, some people were very jealous and angry about it. And so they came up with a plan to get the Hebrews into trouble. They went and whispered in the king's ear. Na, 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 na. What a good idea. Yes, I like it. <coughs> Listen, everyone, a new law is being made. 
everybody in the land must bow down and show respect to the beautiful new statue. Wow, that's big. Anybody who refuses will be punished. Anyone who prays to any other god will be thrown into a fiery furnace. Everyone bowed to the statue and stopped saying their prayers to their own gods, but only to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Well, with a threat like that, who would be brave enough to disobey the king? Actually, there were three people brave enough and they were called Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, three Hebrews who went right on praying to God Almighty and who refused to bow down when they passed the golden statue. And of course the troublemakers who knew that this would happen rushed off to tell the king. Na, 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 na. What? They have disobeyed me? These foreigners, these Hebrews that I have treated so well, how dare they bring them to me? Your Majesty, we have served you well and with loyalty and will always do so. But above all, we are loyal to our God. We cannot bow down to your statue. We have promised to only worship our God. And we will not change our minds, even if you throw us into the fiery furnace. Our God will surely rescue us. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know, O King, that we can never bow down to your statue. Make the furnace seven times hotter. What God could possibly save anyone from that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they took poor Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, put them into that fiery furnace and slammed the door shut. And now comes the exciting part. God was about to show proud King Nebuchadnezzar a thing or two. That will teach them to disobey me. But wait, what's this? They're walking about. They're not even being touched by the flames. And now there's four men in there, not three, and the fourth the fourth, he looks like a god or an angel. Stop the fire. Open the door. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego walked out of the furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar looked at them with amazement. Not a hair on their head was singed. There were no burns the fire had not harmed them at all. They don't even smell of smoke. Their God sent an angel to protect these men. He must be worth worshipping. These men have behaved with honour, willing to give up their lives even rather than worship any other God. I hereby make a new rule. Anyone who speaks against their God will be thrown into the fiery... Well, all right, not the fiery furnace. But I will be very, very angry. I 
am a great king, but this is a greater God. <laughs> what brave men they were. They were ready to die rather than give in to what they knew was wrong. Even today in many parts of the world, there are people suffering because they have made choices to do what they believe to be right, and it gets them into trouble. We say these people are being persecuted. Think about how brave and strong these people must be. Now, I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, please help all those in the world who are persecuted for their beliefs. Help us to respect people who stand up for what they believe in. Amen.